Before we can install Vue, we need to be able to install Node.js on our system. So you can go to nodejs.org and then download the latest long-term release. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is let you download and install Node.js and then you need to open up your console window, CLI, command line interface. If you want to open this up on Mac, you can go to the spotlight and you can type in terminal and it will open it straight up for you. If you're on GNU, you can press Control, Alt and T. And then for Windows, you need to go to your start menu, you need to search for the command prompt and you need to right click as administrator. That way your console is running with administrator privileges. So next up we need to install this. So I'm going to type in sudo first of all which gives me administrator privileges. Please note Windows users you do not put sudo in here. This is only for Mac and GNU slash Linux. Next thing you want to type in npm for node package manager. You want to type in i because that's short for install. You can actually type install if you want, but I'm going to type in I, then hyphen G, which means install it globally. So this application will be available anywhere in any directory. Now also we're going to install another program called Webpack. Webpack is simply a compressor. So when I talk about your HTML and your CSS being minified, even your JavaScript, Webpack is doing all that for you. It's compressing everything so it makes the final production smaller. So we're going to install both of those programs. Type in your password, you won't be able to see it being typed in. But if you get it right, hit return and hopefully it'll start installing those programs. The next thing I'd like to do is create a new project in this development directory and view. So what I'd like to do is CD, which means change directory. I need to go to the development directory and then I need to go to the view directory. Hit return. Now I'm targeting the correct directory with my console window. I can type view init, which stands for initialize, which means create something. Webpack, because we want Webpack to compress our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's the job of Webpack. It's a great way to compress things together. So I'm going to type in Webpack and then the project name, such as view hyphen cards. Hit return and it will start downloading the template from GitHub. Please make sure you do have Git pre-installed. And then all you need to do is give a project name. I can just leave it as the default project name. You can give it a description if you'd like. And also you can type in the author, which is your company name or your name. And then I'm going to hit return at that point, And that's going to allow me to show this section. Now we will be working with the view router later on, but not right now. I'm going to show you how to install the view router manually. However, in existing projects or your future projects, you'll probably answer yes to this. So I'm just going to say no for now. Do I want ES linting that helps debug code? No, I don't for now. I don't want any unit testing. And again, I don't want any other testing. Finally, it says, do you want to use the NPM? You have a few options here, but I'm going to say yes, use NPM. It's going to go ahead and create that directory and it's going to start downloading everything into that directory. Finally, the project has been downloaded and verified. So first of all, we have quite a few directories and files, but I want you to note that you won't be working with most of these files. However, some things are of interest. So if you need to alter the webpack process, again, that's how your final production is going to be built. It's going to be compressed. You can modify certain options and settings in these JavaScript files to change the build process to suit your needs. Most people though never really have to. You also have a configuration that's self-explanatory. Don't forget we have two separate environments. We have the development environment, which is what EMB stands for. And then you have your standard environment or production environment. That's the one that you publish to the server. Again, you can have some settings specifically for development and specifically for production. And the index one is for both environments. So whatever you set or configure in index.js applies to both. The next thing is the index.html. Never touch this file. It is not for you to touch. It's hands off. But that's where when we tell the browser to show us an example of our project, it's going to do it here. Node modules. Well, if we look at node modules, they're just programs. Okay. When we say a package, you know, Node Package Manager, all it's talking about is programs and it's managing those programs. It's installing and uninstalling all those modules or programs as we need them. And as you can see, Vue does use a lot of programs. And if you need to install third party programs from the Node Package Manager, install it in that directory, the Node Modules directory, and you'll be able to use that program that you've downloaded. The next thing is the package JSON. So we have the .json file and you have the standard 
package JSON file and if you go ahead and take a look at that you can open it up and you can see that it has a lot of configurations such as the name of your project, the version of your project, the description of your project, the author and so forth and it has all sorts of options for you and configurations. So this is also very important to look at but again you probably won't need to change most of this. Maybe a few versions for example you might need to change later on in your project. You also have a readme which gives you a nice rundown of this project structure but hey you've got me to do that. The static directory is for mostly static assets so if you wanted to include certain third party libraries and so forth the static folder is great for storing that. Now this is the folder where we come to and it's the source folder standing for source code SRC and this is where you'll be doing all of your development work. So if you go inside of here you'll notice this is the project when you start editing these files you'll start seeing big changes in your projects and this is what it comes down to. So now what I'd like to do is I'm not going to edit any of these files in front of you but you can see you've got components that's your .view files those are your components you have your .js files they are your modules and I'll come on to what that means later and then also you have your assets directory so images svgs audio video whatever it is stuff it in the assets directory and you can have whatever folder structure you like. You don't have to have the components. You don't have to have assets. You can rename them and you can change them. But please do note, you may break other parts of your application if they link up to it. So be careful, but you can have your own folder structure. It's very flexible in that manner. But now what I'd like to do is see this running in the browser. So let's go ahead and take a look at targeting the directory because at the moment we're targeting the view directory now what I need to do is go inside of the project directory so I'm going to say CD and then I'm going to type in view again and I'm going to go to view cards hit return so now my terminal is targeting this directory and I can see it there and then I can type in npm run and then we want to run the dev environment hit return and what that will do is it will start to compile so compiling if you think about pieces to a puzzle your job is to compile all the pieces of the puzzle to make the puzzle so all we're doing here is we're taking all these little files that we have this and this file over here and all these other files we're compiling them putting them all together like a big jigsaw puzzle and then it's going to run and you will notice that it's giving us a web address which is our local host and it's saying 8081 sometimes it will be 8080 by default but I've gone with 8081 because I have another project running then what I'm going to do is open up a new window and I'm going to paste this in so here we go localhost 8080 we have the view project that's now running in the browser and one thing to note is you must leave this window open so if you've got the command prompt or the terminal leave it open and i'll explain why in the next upcoming lectures